Isn't life a curious journey? Just when you think you've got it all figured out, along comes something that throws you for a loop. And often, that something comes from the most unexpected of sources, our moms. Now, let's be honest. Moms have this unique blend of wisdom and wit that can turn the most mundane advice into a profound life lesson. I mean, where else can you get a lecture on life and a recipe for the world's best meatloaf in the same conversation? So, my mom, she's a character. She has this knack for dropping these philosophical bombs out of nowhere. The other day, I was telling her about how hard I try to make everyone happy. How I bend over backwards for people, and she just looks at me, completely unfazed, and says, You know, you can lie down for people to walk on you, and they will still complain that you're not flat enough. Boom. Just like that. I'm standing there, holding my phone, wondering if I should write that down or call a therapist. And it got me thinking, isn't that just the perfect metaphor for life? We spend so much time trying to be what others want us to be, trying to flatten ourselves to fit into someone else's idea of perfect. And it's never enough. It's like playing a never-ending game of human origami. So, tonight, I'm going to share some stories, some thoughts, and maybe a few laughs about this whole concept of trying to be flat enough for the world, and how, at the end of the day, you've just got to live your life, preferably in 3D. So, let's start with taking my mom's words literally. Picture this. You're lying down, trying to be as flat as humanly possible, and someone has the nerve to say, Hey, you're not flat enough. I mean, what do they expect? Did they think they were walking on a human-shaped pancake? It reminds me of those people who are never satisfied. Like, you could hand them a bar of gold, and they'd complain it's too shiny. Or serve them a gourmet meal, and they'd moan that the parsley's on the wrong side of the plate. And speaking of flat, have you ever tried to make pancakes? There's always that one person who wants them thinner. Can you make them like creeps? Sure, and while I'm at it, shall I just teleport us to Paris? I mean, come on. I'm using Aunt Jenny's mix. Not a magic wand, but back to the lying down part. There's something hilariously tragic about trying to be a human carpet. Imagine going to that extreme to please someone. Here, let me lie down. Walk all over me. Oh, what's that? My spine is too bumpy. Let me just remove it for your convenience. And this whole flatness fiasco isn't just about being physically flat. It's about dumbing down your personality, your desires, your dreams, just so you can be more walkable. Like, oh, you don't like my love for jazz? Poof. Now I'm just into whatever's on the top 40. You know, I actually tried this once. At a party, I decided to be the most agreeable person there. Oh, you think the Earth is flat? Fascinating perspective. You believe in aliens? Tell me more while I text NASA about a potential abduction. Let me tell you, by the end of the night, I felt flatter than a cardboard cutout of myself. Now, let's dive into the world of people-pleasing. It's like being a chameleon, but instead of changing colors, you're changing opinions, tastes, and sometimes even your favorite type of pizza. It's exhausting. People-pleasing is like being a human jukebox, but instead of playing music, you're just spitting out whatever you think people want to hear. Oh, you love country music? Yee-haw, me too, partner. Next thing you know, you're wearing a cowboy hat and don't even know why. And let's talk about trying to please everyone. It's like trying to pick a movie for movie night. You think it's going to be easy. Let's watch a comedy. But then someone wants a drama. Someone else wants a documentary about penguins. And suddenly you're four hours in, scrolling through Netflix, and end up watching none. The only thing you've agreed on is that you're all hungry. The worst is when you try to please everyone at work. I remember this one time. 
I agreed to do everyone's tasks. Sure, I'll write your report, Mike. No problem, Linda. I'll cover your meeting. By the end of the day, I was like a walking, talking office supply closet. I had so many sticky notes on me, I could barely move. I was less of an employee and more of a post at piñata. Then there's dating. Oh, dating as a people pleaser is a special kind of torture. You're like a chameleon on a first date. You like hiking? Me too. Meanwhile, the only hiking you've done is up the stairs when the elevator's broken. But the best is when you're trying to please someone who just can't be pleased. Like my Aunt Gertrude. I once spent an entire afternoon making her favorite dish. I followed the recipe to the letter. I present it to her with pride, and she takes one bite, looks up, and says, It's good, but it's not like your mother's. I mean, come on. That's my mom's recipe. If I made it any more like my mom's, I'd have to be my mom. So, what have we learned from lying down and trying to be a human pancake? Well, first off, it's impossible to please everyone. It's like trying to juggle flaming torches while riding a unicycle. Even if you manage it, someone's going to say, yeah, but can you do it on a tightrope? Life's too short to spend it as a doormat. I mean, imagine your epitaph. Here lies Sarah. They were wonderfully flat. Not exactly the legacy most of us are aiming for, right? And this whole flattening ourselves for others. It doesn't just make us unhappy, it makes us unrecognizable. I once tried so hard to fit into a new group of friends that I started dressing like them, talking like them, even started drinking coffee like them. And I hate coffee. I looked in the mirror one day and didn't recognize myself. I was like a bad clone in a low-budget science fiction film. This one time, I was at a job where everyone was super competitive. So, I thought, I'll be competitive too. I was staying late, coming in early, and after a while, I was like a zombie with a briefcase. My own dog didn't recognize me. He sniffed me like, do I know you? You smell like stress and photocopier ink. But the real kicker? When you stop trying to flatten yourself, you start realizing what you actually like what you actually want. It's like waking up one day and realizing, hey, I don't have to watch sports to fit in. I can just admit I prefer cooking shows. Suddenly, you're free to be the master chef of your own life. It's about authenticity. The moment you stop trying to be a human carpet, you start to find your tribe, your people. And these are the folks who like you for your bumpy, quirky, 3D self. They don't want a flat version of you. They want the deluxe, multidimensional, IMAX version. So, the lesson here? Be yourself. It sounds cliche, but it's true. The world doesn't need more doormats. It needs more originals. More people who say, this is me, take it or leave it. And if they leave it, well, more room for your personality to stretch out and breathe. So, we've established that trying to be a human pancake isn't the way to go. What's the alternative? Simple. Embrace your lumps, bumps, and all the quirky bits in between. It's time to celebrate being unapologetically you. Being yourself is like finally deciding to dance like no one's watching, except you're at a grocery store and everyone's actually watching. But who cares? You've got your favorite jam on, and those aisles are your runway. I remember the first time I decided to just be me. I showed up to a party in my favorite Hawaiian shirt. You know, the kind that's so loud it's practically screaming. My friends were like, what are you wearing? And I was like, this, my friends, is the sound of my personality. Let's talk hobbies. I used to pretend I liked all these cool activities. Yeah, I love hiking. Totally into rock climbing. The truth? My favorite hobby is competitive napping. It's a thing. You see who can nap the longest. Spoiler alert, I always win. 
And you know what's great about being yourself? You start attracting the right people. The kind who appreciate your love for weird documentaries or your ability to quote every line from that 80s sitcom. Suddenly, you're not alone in your nerdiness. You're part of a nerdy wolf pack. Being yourself also means owning your mistakes. I used to hide them like, nope, wasn't me who burned the microwave popcorn. Now, I'm like, yeah, I did that. Smells like my cooking skills or lack thereof. And let's not forget fashion. The day I swapped my uncomfortable shoes for sneakers, my feet threw a party. It was like they were singing freedom. And sure, some people might think sneakers with a suit. But I think comfort with a dash of rebellion. In the end, being yourself isn't just good for you. It's good for the world. Think about it. Every time you're genuine, you give someone else permission to do the same. It's like a chain reaction of authenticity. All right, folks, as we come to the end of our little comedic journey, let's recap what we've learned from my mom's wise words about not lying down for others to walk over you. Because let's face it, even if you were as flat as a pancake, someone would still complain you're not gluten-free. We've realized that being a people pleaser is like being a chameleon in a disco too many colors, too much confusion. It's exhausting and you end up forgetting which color you were in the first place. We've laughed about the absurdities of trying to fit in, of dumbing ourselves down, and the funny situations it gets us into. But more importantly, we've seen the beauty of standing up, or in this case, standing out. Remember, it's okay to be your unique, wonderful, and sometimes weird self. You might be surprised how many people out there are looking for exactly who you are. And for those who aren't? Well, they're just missing out on a great person with a killer Hawaiian shirt collection. So, I want you to take this message with you. Live your life in all its three-dimensional glory. Don't flatten yourself for anyone's convenience. Be bold, be bumpy, be beautifully you. And if anyone ever tells you that you're not flat enough, just smile and say, I'm not meant to be walked on. I'm meant to stand tall. Before we say goodbye, I've got a small favor to ask all of you out there in the YouTube universe. If you found a bit of joy or a nugget of truth in what you've heard today, go ahead and hit that like button. It's a small gesture, but it means a lot. And if you're feeling really generous, why not share this video with someone who might need a good laugh or a bit of encouragement? Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content that's sure to bring a bit of light and laughter into your days. Hit the bell icon so you never miss out on the fun. Your support helps us keep the good times rolling and the wisdom flowing. So, hit that like button. Subscribe and spread the love. Thanks for joining. It's been an absolute pleasure. Keep laughing, keep dreaming, and until next time, keep on being your amazing selves. Thank you.